Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 26. 26. So we got, let's see, oh. Last Meal Krupa. Okay. Dave Lowry. Oh. And Steve Bernier. All right. We got the, the triple shot there. Yep. Not bad. Every decade. Very, very good. Okay, so uh, this episode we'll be talking about Eric Carlson and his return to Ottawa. We'll also be talking about some of the mental mistakes that the team's been making lately. Talk about the win in Montreal and possible trade scenario going on. And uh, November in review. Yeah. And we'll also be uh, taking a look at the, the week ahead. So the time is nigh. Um, okay. You're ready. I'm done. Oh. Okay. Something I said. Good to have you back. Thanks. Thank you. Now that we're in Ottawa. <laughs> so I have good news and I have bad news. I'll give you the bad news first. The bad news is my pet died. Oh yeah, my lip chinchilla. Yeah, I'm so is, sorry. Is gone. So yeah, we actually shaved it off during the <laughs> uh, the live segment that we had. So yeah. you can watch it if you're on YouTube. If you really want to watch it, it's really just me shaving, so it's not a big deal. But um, <laughs> the good news, we have the store is just about ready to open up. We have mm -hmm. a link that we'll be putting down. We have some shirts that are available. We'll be showing you those shirts after uh, the the whole thing here is done. When we close up, we'll have those to show you because mm -hmm. we got them in they look really nice so uh, keep your eyes open for that yeah they're fantastic they are and they're soft they're very soft super soft yeah I'm, I'm actually like impressed yeah they're nice quality shirts nice yeah, yeah good stuff so uh let's go ahead and kick off the show um eric carlson obviously making his return to ottawa he got a video review mm -hmm. or a video montage i guess of yes. his time there um it's a very emotional return and i think we all knew this was coming but he played exceptionally well, um, and it's unfortunate that the rest of the team did not play as well as he <laughs> did. But he had nine shots on goal, which is pretty yeah. high for him. Um, I mean, I guess he takes that many shots, but that many got through, yeah. which is impressive. He's been getting a lot of shots blocked. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see him play better. Um, I mean, we've been seeing him kind of get more comfortable and playing better anyway over, this, over the stretch of the last month, but um, he looked exceptionally well yeah. against Ottawa. Yeah, and see I'm I'm still on the Eric Carlson train. Like I'm I'm still a fan. I'm still um hoping to see him kind of push forward and really um take control of his season. Um there's one thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way with him though, and I feel like he's still in his mind an Ottawa senator. And I get that he just moved. He just got traded mm -hmm. and that he's in San Jose now. Um and it's all still fresh. I get that there's some personal things uh, happening or that happened in Ottawa. And uh, I get that he likes the fans. I get that he liked all of his teammates and whatnot. But at some point, I, I really want to see him commit to being a shark. In whatever fashion that means for him, I want to see him commit to being a shark. Because I hear things like, hey, I wanted to play in front of those guys and those fans. Well, the, those guys is his ex-teammates ex-teammates they're not your teammates anymore i get that you have friends there but at some point i want to see a commitment that yes i'm a shark now i, I want to play in front of shark fans not in front of my old ottawa fans right <laughs> yeah. so i i for me it just kind of rubs me the wrong way again i'm still on board and i get that it's going to take him time to to get to that point and i think you'd related it to joe thornton in his career yeah well and joe thornton got traded to the sharks uh he had been a, he was he was drafted by the bruins and and I remember he had just purchased his first house in Boston, and mm -hmm. I think maybe a week or two later got the call that he got traded. And he was very upset, yeah. um, obviously. I mean, he he just figured, okay, I'm going to be probably a Boston Bruin for life for a very long time and get shipped all the way across 3,000 yeah. miles away. So um, I kind of related similar to Joe. Um, I, his is a little bit different because it was during the season. Sure. And he also didn't have a wife or kids at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, Eric, and his wife moved across, you know, the country to a new country, right? And um, all the way on the other side of the of the map. So um, it's a little bit a little bit different, but there are a lot of similarities to it. And I think it took Joe a little while to get the chip off of his shoulder. Boston sent him yeah. over to San Jose. Um, that first year, he certainly was playing with the chip on his shoulder. Oh, yeah. Even the second and maybe the third meetings that he had in Boston, he was doing the same thing. So I think it's going to take a little while. I mean, we keep saying everything's taking a little while, but um, 
I, I agree though that, that Carlson I'm still on the Carlson train that he's he's going to be fantastic for the Sharks and mm -hmm. I don't know maybe maybe he'll get a tattoo on his leg or something of the Sharks <laughs> and then he'll show his commitment and you'll like him a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> no yeah and don't get me wrong I do like the guy um at least on the ice uh I think yeah. he's I think he's phenomenal I think he gets a little more flack than he deserves from some of the fans mm -hmm. um but this is just kind of my my little wish list on on Eric Carlson is commit to being a shark more than anything else I guess so um and you know you, you bring up Joe Thornton and we look at Joe Thornton now and what does he say I bleed teal you know I yeah. mean he's he's obviously been with us for a lot, lot longer um but he has that that feeling now with the mm -hmm. fans and I, I would like to see Eric Carlson uh, get to that point sooner than later obviously where yes these are the old fans these are the old teammates that I had I'm committed to being in San Jose I'm committed to being a shark I'd love to see that and so. one thing I'm really interested in seeing is Carlson can't sign the eight-year deal yeah. until after the trade deadline. What if the trade deadline passes and there is still no extension? That's, I think yeah. that might cause a problem. Yeah. That might cause a, I don't know. Maybe maybe the fans will be kind of like, uh, you know, souring a little bit on Carlson. So yeah. I I don't know. And then I, I this this is kind of leading into what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> a little bit about, you know, Doug Wilson coming right. to talk to him. But um, you know, if if the Sharks are out of a playoff spot, they're not doing so well, which they haven't been. Yeah. Uh, is there a fire sale later on towards the trade deadline? Maybe it's, that's maybe that's part of the discussion. That it's Wilson potential. Had. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it kind of tells them, you know, don't don't make me force my hand, kind of thing. Right? Yeah. But we'll jump into that yeah, uh, yeah. in a bit here. So uh, for now, we'll go ahead and talk about some of the mental mistakes that these guys have been having. And you know, I don't think it's a talent issue. I think there's plenty of talent on the team, and I think that they know how to play the game. I think they know how to play well with each other. They're just not executing on that for whatever reason that might be. I think a lot of it is they're in their own heads. Um, maybe they're trying to do too much, and in trying to do too much, they end up doing worse. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of what LeBanc's problem is right now. I think he's really concerned with, you know, getting the puck into areas where maybe he's trying to force it, and he's trying to do too much. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, I think Carlson. We just watched the Montreal, the, the highlights of Montreal game today, and Carlson. Uh, there was at least three breaks coming back the other way. Now Carlson, I think. Part of his thing is he pinches a lot and he's trying to read plays and, and make offense happen. Uh, but he's such a good skater and so quick that he can he can do that and still come back and cover, which we saw on one of the plays is he right. got back he busted his butt and got back mm -hmm. and, and broke up kind of broke up the play, but but definitely helped with it. Yeah. So I think that's part of as part of Eric Carlson's game in that he's pinching and that he's creating offense and he, he's a creative player. Um, but he's going to give up those odd man breaks. Yeah. And he needs a defensive partner that can at least slow up the odd man break enough for him to get back and, yeah. and get in position. So I, that's kind of another mental thing is maybe the team's just not quite used to it. Um, I, I don't know. What, what do you think? Well, I think it also comes down to a confidence issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and a frustration, really, for the, for the players. I mean, it's, we got to see Logan Couture, you know, after the loss to Toronto, mm -hmm. where he was saying, you know, that easy tapping goal, that's just unacceptable. You know, things like that, where he's, you know, he was talking about, you know, are, are we close to being able to handle these higher powered teams? That was one of the questions that he had to field. And, and he flat out said, you know, I don't think we're close. We're not close. Yeah. When you're letting things like that happen, no, we're not close. And I, we appreciate the candor, obviously, you know, him, him just coming out and saying it, but... Um, you know, he was also asked, is this a structure issue or is this a commitment issue? And both times he's asking the question, he, he's nodding like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And when he says, is it structure or is it commitment or is it both? And he looks at the, the guy and says, I think you just answered your own question, you know? So uh, it, there's a lot of things going on, I think, right now where they're not just playing confident um, for whatever the reason is. Maybe just because they have had a, a, a few losses strung together and that just does damage your confidence or if there's something else that's going on inside that locker room that maybe the fans don't know about that's uh, you know causing a frustration or causing that confidence issue. Not necessarily yeah. between players, but right. we don't know what's going on with them. Only the players inside the room know. Right? Yeah, and I think, it was, I think it was Pavelski last week during that same kind of interview time frame um, mentioned it's a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. That... that um, you know, you get up, uh, and today's game was a great example, the Montreal game. They were up 2 nothing, and you're kind of like, uh, the, what are the Sharks going to do? Are they going to keep scoring and, and shut down Montreal, or are they going to mm -hmm. let them back into the game? 
and Montreal scored, made it two to one, and then um, <laughs> had many chances to tie it. You start thinking, here we go. Exactly. Right. And just in the back of your mind, just a little bit, as a player, you go, okay, here we go again. All the fans are going, okay, here we go again. And thankfully, the Sharks got that third goal. Yeah. Pavelski got that third goal, so that kind of sealed it, kind yeah. of sealed it. They still had more chances. But um, I think it's a it's, it's a confidence. It's, it's multiple things. It's not just one thing. You know, two weeks ago, the hot topic was Martin Jones. Right. Right. He's playing terrible. Aaron Dell should be the starter. If only we had Dell and Nett instead of Jones, we'd be winning all these games. Right. Exactly. That was kind of the, the feeling. Yeah. And, and, and Dell um, let in what? So he shut out Vancouver 4 right. nothing. Then he starts the next game <laughs> and loses 6 nothing to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Not n And again, what we're saying is it's not the goalie problem. Right. It's, it's the defensive structure. It's the team defense. Right. Um, and then the second game against Toronto, that's in five goals. Right. So that's 11 goals in two games. Um, like we were saying before in last week's episode, Dell is not quite ready to be a starter. Um, we still think Jones is the better of the two goalies. Right. Um, I think we saw Jones play a very strong game today in Montreal. He had some incredible saves. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he also played well in the Buffalo game. They unfortunately lost that game, but it was close, and he kept them in close. So, um, I that it's like every week there's a new excuse, a hot topic, yeah, right, or a hot yeah. topic, right? Yeah. So again, there's not one reason why the Sharks aren't winning. Well, and it's anything, multiple. if anything else, like the the fact that Dell got 11 goals scored on him in two games, mm -hmm. and then the previous game to that he gets a shutout. I mean that that almost speaks to the fact that it's not really him, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you go from pitching a shutout to the next game you you get shut out six nothing, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's the guys in front of you, and I'm not saying it Dell's not necessarily at fault, but you can't pick one thing and say if only we replaced this one thing, we'd be so much better because that's not really the case. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and going back to Pavelski's uh, post game interview, mm -hmm. I think Curse had asked him. Um, you know, what is it that's the problem here? What we, we, Because Pavelski says, we got to figure it out. And it seems like every time they lose, they always say, they keep saying that. We got to figure it out. <laughs> you know, we didn't play well enough. It's the, the prototypical, like, hey, what are you going to do to win this game? Well, we got to chip pucks in, get pucks deep. And, you know, it's the same same thing you hear over Score and over. more goals than the other team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as a fan, you know, you, you, you hear the same thing over and over and you start thinking, okay. Yeah, we heard that last game. Like, what's going on, right? And so Kerr's followed up with them. He's like, yeah, it seems... Basically, kind of what he was saying was it seems to be like a theme, you know, that that we got to figure it out. So what do you need to do to figure it out? And you could see Pavelski was kind of like, <laughs> like he's kind of a little chuckle, like, ah, I don't really know what else to tell you because I, I don't have a PC answer I want to use, yeah, I want to <laughs> use my canned PC answer, yeah. but you're kind of not letting me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's but, when they went to Couture and got and that yeah, other quote. Right, yeah. right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the other thing that Pavelski said was, you know, you know, we, we sometimes we just find a way to lose. My problem with that is that implies that you're the better team. And on those games that where we, where we were make, making those big horrendous mistakes and having those losses, we were not the better team. It's not finding a way to lose. We were just losing flat out because we were just getting beat, period. You know, it's not like if you're finding a way to lose, that means you're creating lots of chances. You're even scoring some goals and then you're just breaking down defensively and letting the team come back and they're scoring and then they win, right? That's finding a way to lose. This was not finding a way to lose. This was just yeah. flat out not playing well. But this also goes back to your point of the team being uh, what you first said, skilled enough, Yeah. right? I think the Sharks on paper are better team than most of the teams that they're playing against. Right. So the Sharks are not the underdog going into these games. They're, mm -hmm. They are the ones that should be winning the games. I think that's the frustrating part right. for a lot of Sharks fans is is going, why aren't they not blowing people out of the water, but they should be stringing together a lot more wins yeah. than they are. Well, and it's tough, too, because, uh, you know, they've, they've had back-to-backs galore throughout right. this road trip. Yeah. So. I mean, they had, what we had, three back-to-backs in seven games. So yeah. six of the seven games were back-to-back -back and on the road, which is crazy. That, that's just, that's an insane. Oh, well, we're going to get to that well, a little yeah, we'll, bit later, we'll too. We'll talk but, a little bit more about that one, too. But, yeah. Uh, but the win in Montreal, um, they had a special guest come and visit beforehand, <laughs> right? Special guest. Special <laughs> guest. Basically, the big boss man came yeah. down and uh, went on the trip for one, met with the team beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, they had a meeting with just with DeBoer, and then they had a meeting with Doug Wilson. And uh, I think it was Pavelski. Is it Pavs or Vlasic? I can't remember, but one of them. Had said I think it was yeah. Pavs. He said, he said that uh, it was a little scarier or something, or a little... 
It meant a little bit more. Meant a little because, bit more, yeah. yeah. So who knows what Doug <laughs> talked to him about? It could have been, you know, hey, you're gonna force my hand if you guys aren't gonna get your stuff together by the trade deadline. I'm gonna have to blow up this team, and we're gonna be done, and this is it. Or, you know, maybe he said you gotta win one for the Gipper. You know, Joe <laughs> needs to get his name on the cup. Yeah. So everyone needs to get behind this and and commit to the team plan, the team, the whole structure, everything, yeah. and and start playing like we know you can play. Yeah. I Who mean, knows? We're just speculating, if you will. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice little jab there. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, and, and we've um, we've seen Shimmick play his first NHL game, which mm-hmm. is nice. Um, and he actually played really well. I thought he got an assist. He didn't get an assist tonight, uh, unfortunately. But um, puck went in the net, and everybody was patting him on the head. So I guess, you know, congrats on your first shift where somebody scored a goal and it wasn't you. But You're, you're on the ice and they scored. Hey, why a not? Plus. You're a plus one. He's a plus one. And... I'm on board. He gets he gets a goal hug. <laughs> Not everyone gets a goal hug. It sounds Just the good guys to me. on the ice. Just yeah. the guys on the ice. Sure. So he got to play alongside Brent Burns, which is also pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and and if you remember uh, episodes ago, we've been saying, uh, and I apologize for it after the fact, um, there might be a hole next to Brent Burns, and that I I had a problem at the beginning of our our, our run on this show here, mm. uh, saying that. You know, Yoakam Ryan doesn't scare me. Brent Burns doesn't scare me. The combination of Yoakam Ryan and Brent Burns kind of scares me, right? And uh, that's why I said there, there's kind of like a hole to fill. Somebody who needs to be a little bit more defensively minded and uh, can play alongside Burns, and I had since apologized for that, right? Um, this is Shimmick's first NHL game. Mm-hmm. Something of note here. This is not a guy who's played in the NH- or the AHL a bunch this season, the only ice time he's had is practice ice time. So he hasn't really had game situations. Yeah. And then you throw him into a game in hockey mecca, right? <laughs> Not exactly the best team in the league, but it's it's an intimidating barn to be playing in. Definitely. And you're playing him alongside Brent Burns, who, again, we've talked about is the wild man that's out there. Hard to get a read on what he's going to do. And from what I saw and from what I heard, because I was walking around the uh, holiday festival of lights kind of thing or whatever oh, it was. Nice. And I had, I had the, yeah. had my phone in my sleeve and I was listening to the game this way. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, you um, headphones. No, I didn't actually. I, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Poor um, he, so Shimmick, uh, it sounded like he had a really good game. He had some pretty big hits. I think he, he was credited for one, but we saw like good three he's solid, a, big, he's hits. A bigger guy. Yeah. He, he brings something different to the lineup. That I think we kind of talked about this during yeah. the live show about, um, the Sharks are not very physical. Dylan's probably the most physical mm-hmm. of the six defense, six starting defensemen. Sure. Um, I, I think, I, and we kind of mentioned this before when we talked about the uh, the seventh defenseman, if you will, yeah. going into the season, that it's probably going to get rotated based on matchups. And we hadn't seen Shimmick. Like he hasn't right. played at all. So um, now we can kind of see what he brings to the table. Brings a little bit more grit, a little bit more toughness. Oh, yeah. um, I think he complimented well with Burns. Yeah. Because he's going to be more of a stay at home. He's not going to bring in the offense. Right. So um, I think it's it's a good thing um, to bring him in now. Like, why not? Yeah. So they sat Ryan and they put in Shimmick, right? They swapped him out. Yeah. Well, so I, I think the game before they actually had Tim Heed playing in there. So right. Ryan was already sitting. So it kind of makes you wonder if something's going on with Ryan. Maybe if he's got like an ailment or we'll talk a little bit later. Maybe there's something else going on. Um, but with Tim Heed getting pulled out of line, lineup and Shimmick getting put in, um, I don't know. Maybe that's that's an option for us is to play Shimmick alongside Burns. And, you know, again, rookie, first game. Mm-hmm. He had a lot going on that game. He was just all amped up and ready to go. But, my goodness, this guy's like a tank. He's <laughs> I've seen him at practice, and he's not like the tallest guy on the team. But he's got these shoulders that just look like he makes him look like a bulldog. You know, yeah. he's just like just tank little tank thing. You know, he's a little ball of hate kind of thing, right? Yeah. So only only bigger than than Marchand is. But um, we got to see it tonight. We got to see it on display. He was running around out there and just slamming people. And there's a couple guys that got up slow. Yeah. You know, so he's got some muscle behind him too. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens with him. I hope he gets uh, a few more looks uh, as the season goes on. So I mean, it could be part of. DeBoer changing things up yeah. because they were losing mm-hmm. and rewarding those guys too yeah. for practicing and playing hard and mm-hmm. getting getting them some, some time. Yeah. I mean it could be that could be the time. Or or it could be <laughs> a trade is on the horizon. Right. Do you want to start with that one or do you want to start with what you thought uh what you were thinking of with the trade? Because uh, we heard okay, so let me set this up. We heard with, with <laughs> from Kevin Kurz, right? Um that the uh Carolina Scout was at a Sharks game 
but he was also at another Sharks game. They were back-to-back. Back back. Not back-to-back back games, but the games right. that were consecutive, we'll say. Um, and so the scout was there checking out the Sharks in both games. Checking out something. Yeah. So you thought that perhaps... Well, not only that, but Doug Wilson was on the trip as well. Right, right. So okay. that kind of ties it in even more. Not that yeah. he'd be talking to the scouts, but at least he's on hand right. for maybe an in-person meeting or something. Um, so my original thought, if it's Carolina, they need a goalie. Um, they have to start the season. They had Scott Darling and Peter Mrazek, mm-hmm. and Mrazek got hurt. Darling has just been unfortunately awful because it's such right. a success story for him yeah. personally. Um, they just waived him last week. Yeah. So Curtis, and no one claimed him. Right. And yeah. Curtis McElhaney, I believe, was claimed off of waivers from Toronto. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that up. Mm-hmm. That'll be a producer note. Boop. Um, <laughs> and uh, but he he's Columbus. Was it Columbus? I don't know. Yeah, I think it was Columbus. Might have been Columbus. Well, he's played all over the place. He's, <laughs> anyway. he's been, uh, he's a journeyman. Journeyman okay. backup. He's never really been a starter. Uh, I think Calgary, like six years ago, he, he kind of started. But the most games he's played in a season is 28. So um, he's not a starting goalie. He's a, he's a guy that could take over for stretches, almost like another Aaron Dell. Like someone who who's solid for a couple games, but you can't give him the whole reins. Right. So I think they're on the market for a goalie, and I think they're in the market because they're doing so well that they don't want it to explode right. when it comes to playoff time. So I think they're looking for that that next person, and I think that might be Aaron Dell. Okay. That's my thought. And uh, so the funny thing is, Sharks territory, or not all of Sharks territory, but um, you know, you and I at least, we see Dell as the backup, and we don't see him as a guy that would play starter minutes. Well, if they're willing to roll the dice on that, and um, and see if Aaron Dell can step in and play for a longer stint than just being a backup, then that that might be uh, a worthwhile trade for them to explore. Well, it's funny is they would if they did that. That means they went Scott Darling, Peter <laughs> Mrazek, Curtis McElhaney, and now Aaron Dell. Four backup, backup. backups <laughs> trying to make it work. Yeah. Square peg, round hole. <laughs> Who knows? You know. So that's why that makes me think. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're going after Aaron Jones or Aaron Aaron Jones. Wow, Martin Just Jones. Martin Jones. <laughs> not gonna happen. No, no. I no don't way. Think so. Not not a chance that that happens. But um, but the other way you're thinking. The other way is uh, I mean we were just talking about Shimmick mm-hmm. and uh, talking about Ryan not suiting up. We're talking about Tim Heed and had sat, uh, suited up mm-hmm. sitting out this game. Uh, perhaps. And I don't know Carolina's decor. I think they've got a couple good defensemen, but maybe they're looking for a little bit of depth. Right. Um, a Yoakam Ryan, guy who's got some pretty good NHL experience and playing alongside a guy like Brent Burns and, and maybe he's learned quite too. a bit. Younger, right? Um, he could be some some trade bait that Carolina be interested in. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this works out for the Sharks um, because we've got Tim Heaton and uh, Redeem. I think it's Redeem, not Radham, but anyway, Shimmick. Uh, the two of those guys, they can't push them down to the AHL level. Uh, they'll get claimed off of waivers. So they're sitting here, sitting on mm-hmm. two defensemen that they have to scratch every night, regardless of who's in. So right now, it's That's, Heaton and Ryan got scratched, and mm-hmm. Shimmick was in, right? I think that makes more logical sense. That the Sharks are going to want to try and move one of those yeah. guys and, and get I, something in return. And for I it. and I had said uh, several episodes ago I could see Tim Heed getting moved here because of this reason and because you know he's on his contract year and it's it's he deserves a shot. The guy deserves a shot. You know, with some other team, he's probably not going to get a real good look here in San Jose. Mm-hmm. So, so with Shemek and Heed getting some playing time that could be like a showcase type situation. Kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, either that or there might have been something in the works for Ryan and uh, Heed and Shimmick were playing because they're thinking there might be trading right now. Again, we got some flack the other day for talking about speculation um, where I was saying we're not going to speculate about what's going on in the locker room because we're talking about uh, DeBoer potentially losing the locker room. I was just talking about that situation. I don't mind speculating. That's cool. I'm just saying I'm not going to say that that's a legit reason you know that the Sharks weren't playing well is because DeBoer lost the locker room. In this case, I'm not saying that we're going to trade a defenseman necessarily, right. although I do think it makes a lot of sense. I do think Tim Heed deserves the shot, and I think it does kind of play into why you've seen those three defensemen kind of rotating right. um, for the last, what, three, four games or whatever it was. Yeah. I, I think it, it's, it makes sense is all I'm trying to say. So, And it's, that, it's not unusual for scouts to be at games at all. During the you know around the NHL, yeah. what's what's different about this is that they were at consecutive Sharks games. That's right. what makes you go, okay, hmm, 
something's a little different on this situation. Yeah, consecutive Sharks games with the GM in in town, in town. traveling with the team. Right. So, um, interesting stuff. Again, if you want to say it's speculation and slap us on the wrist, that's cool. But and a team that should not be struggling, that is struggling, that might be looking to right. change something up a little bit. See, and again, one more thing about why the scenario is trading defenseman makes sense is because. Well, okay, we're we're a contender. They think they're a contender. We ship off a, a defenseman who maybe it's a roster spot. Say it is Yoakum Ryan, and we can slot one of those other guys in. Okay, well, what are we going to get back? If we're going to the playoffs, we don't really want a draft pick, right? We want a roster player to help bolster us up to get us into the into the next rounds. In this case, maybe it does make more sense because we have a couple guys that we can't scratch. Right who may be able to step right in. We saw Schimmick step in tonight. They got a win. He played pretty well. Had a plus one. Again, plus minus not the best stat, but still means a little bit of something. Mm -hmm. He seemed to play okay, and he's playing okay alongside Brent Burns, which is, you know, it's hard for a rookie to to read Brent Burns, and he was able to do it. Now, it could be a flash in the pan, but, you know, who knows? Yeah. So I think it does make sense in, in that scenario to say, okay, one of those guys getting shipped out, could benefit both sides and it could be one of those things where we're getting a good pick out of it yeah so and again this is something that we had talked about in the very beginning yeah. of the season i guess in, in the beginnings of our show mm -hmm. is that we may see during the season at some point one of those guys is going to get moved yeah so the time man. is nigh <laughs> 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 um yeah i'm not gonna, not gonna get back <laughs> to that one but uh anyway so uh so november in review if you will okay so we had uh how many games 14 games uh I think it was no. 14. 14 games played yeah. total in November, yep. And we had six wins, six losses, and two overtime losses. Yeah. So not very good. Not very good, but I think we'll we'll say it one more time. We'll go back to the <laughs> 2016 Stanley Cup run. Yes. We were 18-18-2, I think is what it was. Something like that, So yeah. essentially, if you, you make the overtime losses, the points, we were 500. Going into January, we were out of a playoff spot. Right. But looking over that time frame, yeah. we were 500 on, in terms of points right this road trip 500 in terms of points so not great but not exactly in a worse position than we were when we went to fall on that cup run and the problem what makes it worse or compounds the problem is that they're a stanley cup favorite right. whereas you know what two three years ago when they went to the finals they were not a favorite mm -hmm. they were just a team in the running right so now they have more high, higher expectations and more pressure on them and they're not delivering that's i think the bigger problem yeah. No delivery. No, I think you're spot on on that one. I think we had a, what was it, minus seven goal, goal differential. differential. Yeah. yeah, and it's not special teams. No. It, it's it's all even strength. So special teams, the PK is still, in that month span, we looked at the numbers, uh, third, ranked third in the league. They were ranked second overall for right. the season, so they haven't really budged. Like They gave up a lot of power play goals in the last, what, two games ago, I think they it was? They had three power play goals against one team. I can't remember Vegas? who it was. It might have been Vegas. I think yeah. it was Vegas. Um, um, that skewed those numbers, obviously. Right, yeah. Right. Well, it dropped them from second to third, kind of. Sure. Um, and then, but their power play was 12th overall, which is still is still good. Yeah. It wasn't the best, but it's a little bit better than half the league. I think you said 22%. I'll take 22% yeah. on the power play all day. That's that, I have no problem with that. Yeah. So it's not the special teams that's the problem. It's the five on five. Right. Five on five, giving up and scoring. Yeah. They're just not doing it. Well, and we've seen, uh, even in just today's game, when they won, we had lots of odd man breaks the other direction. Three on one, not even just two on one. Mm -hmm. We had three on one breaks, multiple. And again, you, you called it, you know, Eric Carlson's charging his way back into the play. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, he has to charge his way back into the play. Yeah. Um, and Martin Jones, I heard his post game. He had said, you know, it makes a big difference. It makes my job a whole lot easier when we're not having all these crazy breaks, you know, when the team commits to playing really good defense. And again, not the defensemen, but the team, team defense, defense, right? That means the forward cycling back when the for when the defenseman does pinch. That means the defenseman making a smart pinch. Today's game, we saw Justin Braun make a very smart pinch. Yep. He jumped in, was able to pick a pass, oh, and then fired a rocket. Ripped it, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but when you look at the play, his forwards are behind him when he jumps in. Yeah. He's covered. So him making that play, really smart play, and Justin Braun isn't exactly the most offensively minded defenseman on the team. Oh man, he he burned the <laughs> most expensive goalie in the world. <laughs> Think about it that way. The man who gets paid the most money to play goaltender yep. in the entire world. He just burned him. <laughs> just blew it right by him. It's great. It's fantastic. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, I mean, they're 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 were a little bit smarter this this month so far, right? This month we have two games right. in, but still, that's the difference. We're looking at okay, we want to have like a macro view, so let's go back and look at November. And November was a, not a very good month. Now it wasn't a stinker. Yeah, we didn't we didn't totally like you know bite well, it. But again, going back to even strength, I think Kurz had, had tweeted this out that they had two goals that were five on five on the entire yeah. road trip and those were both in garbage time yeah so they didn't really count and there was one four on four goal that was it mm-hmm. the rest was all special teams power play yeah so uh, they obviously need to work on their five on five play yeah and, and it's not like they're not getting chances mm-hmm. they're getting beautiful chances Sorensen has is getting so many chances with yeah. thornton setting him up yeah. and he just needs to bury him i it, mean he's starting to but he needs to bury more of them they just need more finishing yeah because they're getting grade A chances, no, a lot of them. And you're absolutely right. And that's what it comes down to is a lot of this is finish. Yep. And, I'll, and I'll say this. There's a, some line combinations that I really do like. Jumbo with Sorensen, I really like that combination. I've seen mm-hmm. way too many times Jumbo getting a puck to Sorensen and Sorensen doing something nice with it. Now he doesn't necessarily finish all the time, but yeah. they're but getting flow, those chances. That flow the, looks so good. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's good flow. Oh, yeah. it's great. And he's so fast. So it's it's, just, it's always. Yeah, he just, it's lovely. It's quite, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> That's all. You're jealous of a Kiwi. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so that combination I really do like. And LeBanc, when he's when he's not in his own head, I think LeBanc is a great compliment to those two players. Yeah. Um, I saw today without Tibo Meyer in the lineup, for the first time, I think, Pavelski playing alongside Logan Couture. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before aside from the power play. Mm-hmm. And that seemed to work out okay. Um, the other one, again, putting back together Kane, Suomela, and Donskoy. That line looked like it was kind of working pretty good it's there, too. a good amount of speed and puck yeah. protection yeah. with those three guys. The one thing I'll say about uh, Kane... That has kind of bugged me a little bit. I don't see him moving his feet nearly as much as I'd like. He he kind of glides a little bit more than I think he's capable of. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to see him really charge up and down the ice. I think he's going to get more opportunities to get those hits that he likes to, to throw down. <laughs> and I think he's going to find himself in more open areas. And with guys that are creative like Suomela and Donskoy playing alongside you, you're not the setup man. You're the finisher. So mm-hmm. if you can get in those spots, um, really let them get you the puck. It could be a little kickstart from yeah. DeBoer putting them on, putting those guys back together too. Yeah. Kickstarting Kane back up into scoring again. Yeah, could be, could be. Yeah. So we'll see. And uh, I mean, that's kind of November. November was right. so so. So now we're looking November ahead. November was not good. Yeah. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> not so so. It was. I'm, not good. I'm, I'm looking at the record. It right. was 50. So I'm yeah. trying to be optimistic about sure. it. But whatever. Anyway, so looking ahead, we've got some really good games coming up. The first home game in a while against <laughs> Carolina. Yep, that's gonna be a tough one because mm-hmm. they are on fire. However, tonight. When we're shooting tonight. They just lost to LA uh, two nothing, which is not good for Carolina. So, right. but you know, think about it. They just came from the East Coast. That's like on their buys. That's a 10 p.m. game, start game, 10 p.m. Uh, start. Yeah. So they're a little bit jet lagged. Who knows? By Wednesday, they could be a little bit more settled and they're sure. be a little bit tougher. Not that they're going to be a pushover or anything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they go from that home game against Carolina to going into Dallas, I believe. Dallas yes. and then Arizona. On another back to back, yeah, that's so. It's if insane. You, if you look at the stretch where they went to Buffalo, and the end of this week when they play in Arizona, that is seven games in twelve days. Six of the seven are back to backs. That is a ridiculous schedule. Yeah, I, the NHL person who put that together should be. Smacked in the head. <laughs> I'll be nice. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's nice. And I get that it's West Coast. Don't get me wrong. But that's just that's an brutal. insane amount. That's yeah. Brutal. Yeah. That's brutal on an East Coast team that's traveling by bus and not by plane. That's still a brutal schedule. Yeah. But then you're talking about hopping on a plane as opposed to just hopping on a bus. Right. You know, then that uh, takes a, a big toll. Yep. And there's no time change when you're going say, from East Coast to East Coast. Time right? zone changes yeah. are awful. If you're a New York team, you got it made. Yeah. You kidding me? Yeah. Oh, I got to go to New Jersey. <laughs> Whatever. Buffalo. New, New okay. Jersey, yeah. Oh, the other Boston. New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No big deal. Yeah. yeah. For the yeah, for San Jose, it sucks. You got to fly all over the place. Mm-hmm. So, in any case, it is what it is. It's the life of a uh, West Coast it's team. A and brutal schedule. So, what are you looking forward to this week? What do you want to see? Oh, man. I want to see win, win, win. I just, don't care. Right. I just want to see wins. Um, no, I, I want to see a complete effort. Um, I'd love to see the W. Don't get me wrong. That's what we're all here for. But at the same time, I just want to see the team looking like they belong. Um, I I want to see chemistry. I want to see speed. I want to see them 
uh, I shouldn't say speed, but I want to see them trying. I want to see the effort moving up and down the ice. I don't want to see gliding. I don't want to see trying to force passes. Um, I want to see them get out of their own heads Mm -hmm. is really what it comes down to. These guys are way too good at this sport to let a couple losses in a row hold them down. And it's not just being a professional. It's the guys that are on this team are in the upper echelon of players in this league. Look at our blue line. There should be no reason why there's any confidence issues with the guys on that blue line. They should be a very confident group, and they should be able to, to put the puck in the net, keep the puck out of it. So that's what I want to see. I want to see a good, complete, solid effort. If we get the W, great, but I, I, I that's that's what I'm looking forward to. I want to see a, a shift in the way that they're playing the game. I think uh, winning cures all. We win these three games. They're very winnable games. Sure. I mean, most games on paper, the Sharks should be winning. But Carolina at home, you should be able to beat them. It's going to be an exciting game, mm-hmm. I think. Um, Dallas and uh, Phoenix, or Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> are not as strong of a team. They're definitely winnable. Um, unfortunately, Arizona seems to always have the Sharks numbers because they they like to uh, grind out wins. They, they work hard and grind out. So what I like to see is I want to see the Sharks grind a little bit yeah. better, have a little bit more grit, mm-hmm. and get back in that win column. You string together a, a three-game winning streak, Everyone's going to forget about that road trip that you just had. Yeah. So I, I think winning cures all. Well, and, and to that point, I came into this show hours ago. I came, I came, I was going to come into the show thinking, man, what are we going to talk about? Because it's going to be, you know, it's going to be doom and gloom. We didn't play well. And you know, all I'm going to do is pick apart how, like, you know, the, the guys are in their own heads and blah, blah, blah. And we, we've done that to, to some extent. But um, then... They go into Montreal and they win, and it's like, hey, I feel happy again. You know, yeah. it's like you're right. It's Winning very emotional curl. response. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think you kind of have to have that short term memory if you're gonna go ahead and move forward and be successful. Another reason we do a macro view instead of right micro view of every right. single individual. Because if I did a micro on every single game, let's say we did a post game every single game, it would be a kind of a downer every single time. <laughs> and then when we win today, we're like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, everything's all well and good again. You yeah. kind of forget. Well, when you look at the bigger picture, you go, okay, we realized that in November we kind of split, right? There was a big stretch where we were terrible. Yeah. But if you take that stretch out, geez, there must have been some other games where we were actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. You take those four losses out, all of a sudden you're looking at six wins and two losses, right? Yeah. So it doesn't seem so bad. But obviously you get a nice stretch in a row where you're not playing well and it, it – it's amplified, right? Mm-hmm. Because you just everybody's so angry about it. But then you get that one win. Hey, I feel pretty good about it, you know. Yeah. So, it is what it is. Hopefully, we see some more of those wins in a row. I'd love to. But uh, one big win for you guys is our store. <laughs> hey. Yay! What a Woo! segue. Oh yeah. My goodness. It's beautiful. Get at this. So anyway, um, yeah. The uh, the store is. I guess it's open now, isn't it? We'll uh, have it will shortly. be opening. Yeah. So what our producer is telling us is to subscribe on our website. Yes. Uh, you'll get an email notification when it's up and running. Mm-hmm. But we can show you at least what we got. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it. So this is the black shirt with yeah, the so Finn it's, uh, Factor logo on it. Black with the logo on it on the front. It's gigantic. I cannot believe how big the logo is, yeah, it looks um, great. but I love it. Yeah. Um, and then you'll notice on the, the side here, on all the shirts have this on the side, this uh, bring hockey back, and I'm probably gonna get it all wrinkled up, but I'll try. Um, <laughs> bring hockey back on the uh, on the sleeve there. I couldn't think of what this thing is called. It's a sleeve, anyway. Um, Shoulder. So yeah, sleeve. Um, yeah. So this these are the guys that help make this uh, possible for us, and they've done a really good job. Uh, Everything is really vibrant, um, and the the material is just really ridiculously it's, it's soft. It's really so, good. Yeah. Uh, here's a look of the teal version of the shirt yeah. with the white logo. Looks very good. I like that one too. I'm gonna, one. I think I'm gonna pick one of these up. And here is the gray version, which I also think. Okay, I lied. I'm gonna pick that one up too. I know this gray <laughs> one looks really good. It's it's uh, the teal really pops off of it. It's really sharp. Yeah. Um, and again, they're so. And so, so and so these are unisex, but we also have one specifically for the ladies. We do. So we picked up. Or for my old coworker Chris Pavukian, who likes the deep V. <laughs> it's a women's cut V cut shirt. Yeah. Um. And all of these sizes will will be in small through extra large. Small through XL. For all yeah. four shirts. And we'll, we will have hats. I think that's coming like December 21st because they're still stitching them together. Yeah, you'll be uh, able to see on the website uh, what the hats look like. And yeah. you can, I guess you can probably pre-order it mm-hmm. beforehand. Um, and that would be fantastic. That's going to help support us on the show. It's going to make you look great. And we'd love to get pictures of you out in the wild when you're wearing these. Yeah. Either at Sharks games or 
anywhere really barracuda and, uh, games yeah. yeah barracuda games actually let's do that real quick i do want to shout out the barracuda really fast they have been killing it that's true absolutely yeah. killing it if you want to watch some good hockey uh, not saying that sharks hockey is not good hockey but if you want to watch <laughs> some good hockey that's local and it's really super cheap go check out the barracuda it's like 10 bucks for a general ticket you can sit almost anywhere you want mm -hmm. um they have really good deals and everything else and they are playing phenomenal and they right also now. have some great promotions this yeah. year there's yeah. a lot of they're giving away a lot of jerseys a lot of bobbleheads so yeah Check out their schedule and see their promotional schedule. You can see what yeah. what they're going to give away. It's almost like it's a minor league game. It's Absolutely. like minor league baseball where they do a lot of gimmicks and it's a lot of fun stuff. It's great for families. Yeah. So definitely check out the Barracuda. So check out the Barracuda. Check out the the website and and you know, again, these things are really nice. I, I can't. I, you obviously can't feel it here, but this is it's so really soft. It's you, really really. You will soft, not be yeah. disappointed when you wear um, these. I was also told that when you wash these, that um, they kind of uh, come through. I guess a little bit. They'll or fade so. a little bit, so yeah. they'll look aged. You so get you get that kind of aged faded look too once you wash this thing. So it'd be kind yep. of nice. Um, in any case, I think that's everything about the store. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have stickers up there that you guys can buy to at some point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. That's about it. Great. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Episode number 26. It's the softest episode we've, we've had <laughs> so far. Um, and I guess, gosh, we'll just see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.